Hello and welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about Mendelian genetics and foundational experiments of molecular biology. Now this is going to be um, an interesting unit because we're talking mostly about the history um, of how we started with uh, Gregor Johann Mendel and we're going to go all the way up until uh, we are somewhat in, in the 20th century at least. Now, we have to start any talk about molecular biology um, by starting off with Gregor Mendel. Uh, we will then go through the chromosomal theory of inheritance, and then a large chunk of this talk is going to be on the discovery of the genetic material of the cell, which we now know is DNA. We'll talk briefly on the discovery of RNA, and we will mention how the genetic code was cracked. So as I said, talking about molecular biology cannot be done without first starting talking on Gregor Johann Mendel. Now, Gregor Mendel lived in the, in the 19th century, and at the time he was considered a biologist and a botanist, right? He did most of his work on plants. He published his seminal paper in 1866 on hybridization and inheritance of the pea plant. Now, Unfortunately for Mendel, his results were criticized at the time of publication as only being about hybridization and not being about inheritance. And unfortunately for him, he wasn't given the respect that he deserved in his time because his results weren't widely accepted until after he passed away. And that happened in about uh, 1900 is when his work was picked back up by other scientists. However, Looking back after the fact now, we consider Johann, Gregor Johann Mendel as the father of modern genetics. Now, he did all of this work while being an Augustinian friar, so he was a monk, and this was his research that he did on the side. So, let's talk about Gregor Mendel's laws. Now, he made two very important laws based off of his research. This is what he postulated. He showed that there was a principle of independent segregation, and we're talking about alleles. Then, his second law is the principle of independent assortment, speaking toward genes. So, his first law, he started with true breeding lines for certain observable traits. So he used these pea plants, and what a true breeding line means is that they're homozygous, all right? So the, they always produce the same phenotype, all right? So if it's a green pea, if it's a green pea, then when you mate two green peas together, you get only green peas, okay? Now, he inferred that an individual's phenotype was determined by a pair of unit factors, right? And we call those nowadays, we call unit factors, we call these genes. And he said different versions of a single gene are called alleles, okay? So they can vary just slightly, maybe even as, as small as a single nucleotide difference in an entire many, many thousand base pair gene. And he said that alleles can be dominant or recessive. Now, what that means is that any recessive gene, for example, if we say that green, let's say, is dominant, but you can also be yellow, let's say. Okay, so green, if these are the two alleles, okay, Anything, if green is dominant, then anything with two dominant alleles, big G's, will be green. Okay. Anything with even one dominant allele, the big G, will be green. And only something with two recessive alleles okay, will be a different phenotype. In this case, let's say it's a red. Right? So 
your observable phenotype, which is these, is what is called a phenotype. And your uh, genetic composition, okay, which is this stuff, that would be your genotype. Now, genotypes can be experimentally determined by mating and then analyzing the progeny. Okay, so you analyze the phenotypes of the progeny. Remember, phenotypes is anything you can see. Genotypes is the actual genetic makeup. So individual alleles, he says, Mendel, will segregate independently into gametes or sex cells like sperm and eggs, with each gamete receiving one allele from each pair. Okay, so one allele from each pair of alleles. Okay. 